American backed Citigroup, as well as those results, will pay $7 billion to U.S. authorities to settle an investigation into subprime mortgages, which were at the center of the 2008 financial crisis. Citigroup will pay $4 billion to the Department of Justice, this is interesting, and $2.5 billion for what is described as consumer relief, which includes investment in affordable homes. Citigroup is the second major bank to pay a settlement since the investigation began into the loans. Last year, J.P. Morgan Chase paid $13 billion to settle government investigations into something similar. Yannick Nod from Sturgeon Capital joins me again. I mean, when we saw this, we thought, well, that's a lot of money. But actually, they'd been sort of expecting this, hadn't they? Yes, there have been talk between the government and the regulator and the bank since uh, more or less April. We have seen uh, in, I think, the 9th of June that the, the regulator wanted more than 10 to 12 billion, if you include the settlement for the consumer. Yeah. And the bank was willing only to pay less than four billion. Mm. And obviously, there's been this uh, this work between the bank and the regulator in order to to end up with this type of settlement. All in all, it's I mean the stock is up today, which is a bit surprising given the very uh, large amount. But as you said, uh, JP Morgan paid 13 billion for yeah. very uh, similar event. And I think Bank of America didn't settle yet, but they rumored to to be able to settle around 12 billion mark. I mean, what's interesting about this is that, you know, you often think, don't you, well, if a fine goes to the Department of Justice, where's the money go? Well, I know where it goes, and you know where it goes, into that great black hole yes. of taxation. But this is interesting in as much as two and a half billion into sort of social yes. infrastructure, whatever it may be, which is, which sort of... I don't know, it makes the Justice Department look whiter than white, doesn't it? Well, you have to keep in mind, and since a couple of years, the amount of uh, fine have been tremendous, I mean, from any kind of sort of uh, irregularity, and you have now people are used to have uh, billions, tens of billions of a uh, fine, so all in all, you have to relocate this money. And, you know, I'm not that surprised that some of this money is getting uh, allocated to a specific project, because otherwise, it will go to the, uh, uh, the balance sheet of the state, and no one know we, we know what they will do with sure. it. Now, we had a Portuguese, the, the, the Portuguese. second biggest Portuguese yes. banker in the news last week, and the question was, oh dear, it's going to cause some contagion, because the European markets took it very badly, yes. all the usual questions. Yes. That fear appears to have gone away, yes. and they've got a change at senior management level, haven't they? Yes, Banco Espirito Santo is part of a very, very complicated group. I mean, one analyst called him a spaghetti board, because you have cross-shareholding and cross-loan. And all in all, we know that the bank by itself is a good bank in terms of uh, ratio, in terms of... Uh, Tier one ratio, all yeah. in, but the you know the ownership is uh, is pretty unclear because we don't know what's been guaranteed and what's uh, what's been lent exactly. Um, all in all, I don't think it's a systemic event for Europe. Uh, I think it is a second bank in Portugal, so therefore mm. it, it's uh, marginally negative for Portuguese bank. Okay. Shareholder will lose a lot of money in the in the process. There will be some uh, probably uh, in terms of the holding structure. There will yeah. be probably okay. some people uh, picking close in terms of bond. But all in all, for Europe, I don't think it's a big event. Now let's talk to investors who might be looking at the markets, thinking, "Should I just buy a load of pharmaceutical companies and see what happens?" I mean, it's still going on, isn't it? I mean, we, every week almost we have some new deal or proposed deal. I mean, I think at one point they will. I mean, since a lot of deals are coming from tax inversion, you know, American company yeah. being European company, usually UK or a company in Ireland, in order to benefit mm. from the lower tax rate, uh, at one time they will run at, out of ammunition, I would think, because, you know, there's not so many mm. uh, big enough targets in order to um, trigger those kind of transactions. So I don't think you should, uh, investors should look at this sector, you should like, look at other sector which could offer similar type of return, like chemical, Chemi okay. yes, mm. or even an, in internet and media, I think there is some potential deal like, okay. like this. Yannick, Yannick Nod, thanks so much indeed for joining us.